Today, we're gonna look at a couple of amateur radio antenna books. Which one is the best for you? Well, just keep watching for the answer. Recently, on the live stream, we had a discussion about antenna books, specifically the Rothamel antenna book. This substantial tome uh, frequently is called the antenna Bible for its comprehensive scope. Up until recently, the book was only available in German, but now an English translation of the 13th edition is available. That translation opens this guide up to a whole new audience, and many hams are discovering what a valuable resource this book is. We'll take a look inside this book in a bit, uh, but first, um, what are the specs? Well, Rothamel's antenna book is 1,600 pages. Uh, dimensions are six by nine inches, and it weighs about four pounds. Uh, the paper has a textured finish, and the text is set in about 10-point type. This smaller typeface can make it a bit harder to read, so you're going to have to get your reading glasses all tuned up for it. Uh, cost of the book is uh, 59 euros. I ordered it online direct from the DARC, which is the German Amateur Radio Association. And uh, with shipping, international shipping and the exchange rate, uh, final cost was approximately 87 US dollars. Now we're gonna compare this book uh, with the American Standard Antenna Guide, the ARR Antenna Book. Uh, the ARR Antenna Book has been around since 1939, and this is the new 25th edition, which has some pretty substantial updates in it. Uh, the latest edition was released in the fall of 2023. Uh, so this is the newest uh, guide available. This book, you know, it's no slouch either. <laughs> it weighs uh, five pounds, it's eight by eight, 11 inches in size and has 1120 pages. While the Roadhamel Guides paper has a little bit duller texture, uh, this, uh, the ARL antenna books uh, has, is, is more of a smooth uh, coated paper and it's set in an easier to read, approximately t uh, 11, 12 point type. Uh, the paperback edition retails for $69.95 and is available direct from the ARRL or from several online retailers. Now for full disclosure, uh, both of these books were purchased by me uh, with my own funds. In perusing the books, um, you'll spot some key differences right away. So uh, let's open them up, uh, take a look at their contents, and uh, we'll talk about uh, what what makes each of these guides a little bit different. We're first gonna take a look at the ARRL antenna book. Um, this is probably gonna be, you know, for most uh, amateur radio operators, this is probably gonna be the one that you would be uh, most interested in. So uh, this is the, uh, the new 25th edition. It came out in the autumn of 2023. Um, the new uh, 25th edition's got some uh, new content in it, including expanded coverage of monopole or vertical uh, antennas, new section on model optimization, shunt feeding, uh, tower guidelines and adjustment updated material on direction finding, and a new section on antennas for amateur radio astronomy. Also, another nice feature of the ARRL antenna book is it comes with a lot of downloadable content. Uh, you can download a PDF copy of this book so that you can read it on, on your uh, favorite uh, mobile device. You can also uh, download uh, many of the projects. Uh, there's a lot of projects in this book, but uh, the downloadable content gives you just access to a lot more of those projects, including more detailed plans that you can't quite fit into the, uh, this guide. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at the uh, table of contents uh, because I think this is kind of important. You know, what's going to, what is available in this book. And um, uh, starts off with antenna fundamentals. Uh, talks about those basic antenna types uh, for uh, medium frequency and high frequency, uh, long wires, phased arrays, broad size loops, uh, frequency independent antennas. Uh, general purpose antennas, including your dipole, multiband HF antennas, beam antennas, 
uh, antenna system design. There's a big section on VHF, UHF, and microwave antennas. Uh, separate chapters on those, including a portable antenna systems, a mobile, a stealth or limited space, and then transmission lines and system building. Um, transmission lines, uh, matching systems, including balance, chokes, uh, choke balance, Antenna material construction, safe practices, uh, building antenna systems and towers, uh, transmission line measurements, and antenna troubleshooting. So uh, it gives you a pretty pretty in-depth in idea of the of the content of this book. I'm going to just kind of move ahead here, um, just because we can compare some of the content in uh, the antenna book with uh, Road Hamel. So I'm going to move ahead to um, this is a, a very popular style of antenna, and uh, that would be the N-fed uh, half-wave antenna. Uh, the N-fed half-wave is a, you know, a popular antenna for uh, many amateur radio operators, portable use, uh, also for your, your, your fixed station. It's a, a good, you know, fairly efficient antenna, so it, and it, it tends to be a lot of uh, people's uh, first antenna to, to get onto the air. So looking at it, uh, it's, it, it tells you, it gives you a, a diagram of what you can expect for an N-fed half-wave antenna. Uh, the antenna wire, the feed point transformer, uh, choke ballon of some sort, uh, the counterpoise. In the antenna book, it does recommend using a counterpoise for the N-fed half-wave antenna. And the reason being is that um, you can get, uh, 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 if you don't have a counterpoise uh, for this style antenna, you can get um, common, you know, common mode currents may uh, travel down to the feed line or your feed line itself might become part, become the counterpoise for the, the antenna. So uh, it functions very well with a, with a counterpoise. Now, of course, uh, you don't always have to use the counterpoise because it says right in the, um, here, the NFED half wave requires a counterpoise to stabilize the feed point impedance. The outer surface of the coaxial line often serves as a counterpoise. You do not use a feed point choke ballon without a counterpoise wire. If it is necessary to reduce common mode RF currents on the feed line, a choke ballon or line isolator can be added 10 or more feet from the feed point where the feed line reaches ground level if the feed point is elevated. In the common configuration with the feed point near ground, a few feet of wire connected to the feed line shield will supplement the feed line shield from stabilizing feed point impedance. If installed with the feed point elevated, the feed line shield serves as a counterpoise itself and a separate wire is not used. A ground wire is not necessary for temporary in installation. So really good advice there for your NFED half wave antenna if that's, um, if that's something that you're going to be using. So, uh, moving ahead, uh, portable antenna systems. This is really new, kind of new um, content in uh, the 25th edition of the antenna book. Portable operations have become really popular, like parks on the air and summits on the air. And um, I think, you know, that that's really sort of have driven uh, the uh, the, the editors of the antenna book to add more of this portable antenna systems in the into the latest edition. So, talks about wire antennas, including the popular NFED half wave. We just talked about that. Uh, the NFED hand random wire antenna, another popular portable antenna. Uh, some compacts, whips, uh, ground planes, the quarter wave ground plane antenna, a favorite of mine. Uh, dipoles, uh, uh, tree mounted antennas. Here's a project. Uh, one of the nice things about the antenna book, it does give you lots of projects, you know, so you, that you could, this inf there is, the information in this book is complete enough that you could build an antenna using the, um, the information that's contained in the book itself. Uh, some portable beams, including another favorite of mine, uh, the Moxon antenna. And there's really good information here uh, about the, uh, the Moxon, and cord including uh, dimensions for some of the popular frequencies, uh, ultralight antenna systems uh, for, for portable operations, antenna supports, and um, a kite and balloon supported antennas, and then finally uh, impedance matching and our favorite over-under method of coiling 
uh, your cable. Uh, this chapter has references and a bibliography, so a lot of the information here you can go back to primary sources if you wanted to, wanted to learn more. A lot of these are pulled off of um, uh, QST articles. So a uh, nice thing about being an ARRL member is you've got access to all of those back issues of QST magazine. So you can always, if you want to learn more, you can look it up um, in, the, in the online archives. So that is the ARRL antenna book, uh, the 25th edition. This is just a real, real quick look at that. Now let's kind of see how that compares to that other classic antenna book that I like. And this is uh, Rote Hamel's antenna book. Uh, this is the 13th edition. Uh, this is the first edition in English that's translated from the 13th German edition. I think this came out in 2019 maybe. Um, and the uh, 13th edition came out in 2013. So there's a, there's a little bit of a gap. Uh, between when the when, with the latest German edition and the first English edition. Uh, Rod Hamels has been out since I think the 1950s according to the, to the preface. Uh, let's take a quick look at the uh, table of contents here and you're going to see this is this is quite a different book uh, than the ARRL antenna book. Uh, there is um, tons and tons of information in here but the information um, here we go coupling matching units horizontal monoband antennas uh, horizontal uh, long wire antennas broadband antennas the information is sparse it is very it is very concise and uh, there are a lot I think there's a lot more references that you'll find in these in this guide here uh, Whereas the, uh, the ARL antenna book has a more practical approach to antennas, uh, it, leaves a lot of, it leaves a lot of stuff out. So if there is an oddball or a, a different style of antenna that you're looking for, you may, if you don't find the information in the ARRL antenna book, uh, you're definitely going to find it in Road Hamels here uh, because this is just a big, long laundry list, a humongous catalog of everything that's available uh, for for antennas and um, it tells you a lot. Um, finishing up here in uh, antenna measurement equipment, uh, symbolic method, a lightning protection, practical antenna construction, some of, so some of that same information that we found in the antenna book, microwave, accessories, uh, electromagnetic field exposure, uh, computer programs, an overview of those, a bibliography, a lot, an, an uh, appendix and, and whatnot. So just tons and tons of, of information. Now, I'm going to move ahead of here a little bit. And because we were talking about our favorite, the NFED half wave antenna. So um, the NFED half wave antenna is listed in Rote Hamels. And um, you can see the information here is a lot more concise. At the ends, we have voltage maximum with high impedance on the NFED half-wave dipole antenna. Uh, since there are no transmission lines available with high impedance uh, greater than 600 ohms, there can be no traveling wave feed. Uh, only a standing wave feed with any characteristic impedance of the transmission line, such as the Zeppelin or other possibilities of coupling, the, the Fuchs antenna, etc., are possible. Every NFED half-wave antenna needs a counterpoise. This does not mean, however, that an NFED antenna without a counterpoise system would not work. They will work with anything that might have the same effect as a counterpoise, meaning your, your coaxial cable, of course. Now, this may be the transmission line, or, using a co when, or when using coaxial cable, the outer screen, or other lines or metal surfaces in the vicinity. This causes common mode currents of the transmission line, which may produce radio and television interference. Uh, a connection between the lower end of the transmission line to the ground, either directly or via coupling, should be avoided. Otherwise, it may happen that the transmission line radiates more than the antenna itself. Uh, this occurs when a three-quarter wave matching line has a ground connection at the lower end. And um, there's a reference here. Uh, W8JI uh, calculated this, and then they gave you the reference where you can, you can find that. So... Um, you can, the information is just a lot more um, 
sparse, it's a lot more concise, but the basic information that we found in the ARRL antenna book, yeah, we certainly find in uh, Rod Hamill's antenna guide here. So it's, um, then you go on. Um, I'm just gonna look at another antenna uh, style quickly. You know, we talked about the Moxon quickly in the antenna book. Um, same here, it gives you um, a definition of you know uh, of what the what the moxin is, a little bit of its history, um, some references, advantages, and um, finally the calculations on how you can build your own along with a chart so and a diagram. So if you wanted to build a moxin antenna, you could basically build it with the um, the formula the chart and uh, the diagram that's in this book. Uh, one last thing here. Yeah, the Mox and Beam, just another, another couple paragraphs on the antennas. So uh, you can see a, quite a difference between how um, Rod Hamel goes at um, collecting and cataloging all of this information on different antenna styles and how the ARRL antenna book uh, goes about cataloging uh, information on all of the of, of antenna styles. This is a lot more, um, there's a, a lot more comprehensive in the entire scope of antennas, uh, but the information is more, is more concise. So it's not as, uh, you're not going to get as much detail in, in in this book, but if there's something you need to find, you know, if there's something you want to know about an antenna, it'll tell you what it, you know, what that basic style is. It'll give you um, uh, references. In fact, if we go to the end of the chapter here, if we go to the end of the chapter. It'll give you references so that we can look up, you know. Um, where they pulled the information from, we can go to those original sources and we can we can read, you know, further read that information. And this is a lot, and <clears throat> and whereas the ARRL antenna book use, um, derives a lot of its information off of um, QST articles, which is totally understandable. Uh, this is this really gets into a wider uh, a wider field, a more diverse uh, selection of resources, including. Uh, websites and other books and journals and articles. So there we have it, uh, Rod Hamel's antenna book, uh, the ARRL antenna book, and you're probably wondering the big question, uh, which one is right for you? So um, let's talk about that. So which book is right for you? Well, the Road Hummels is certainly more comprehensive with its uh, quantity of antenna styles and variations. Uh, the content is very direct and to the point. It may not have the uh, depth uh, that the other uh, books have, but it does give you the references and, and links uh, so you can uh, use this as a jumping off point to go off and explore. On the other hand, uh, the ARRL guide uh, may not catalog such a diversity of antenna styles, uh, the information is a bit deeper and more well-rounded. The ERL antenna book also offers a substantial amount of electronic content to supplement the printed version and has plans and diagrams uh, that you can download uh, for uh, projects to build. Now, one thing that I've noticed between these books is that the ARL guide is more of a snapshot of what is the current trend in amateur radio operation. Uh, if you've followed past editions of this book, you'll see that content is consist uh, continually being added and content is taken away. If a designer style of antenna falls out of popular favor, it may be eliminated or have a diminished presence in a future edition. Uh, that's one of the reasons why past editions of the uh, ARL antenna guide are still quite popular. On the other hand, it feels like once an antenna makes its way into road hummels, it is pretty much there to stay. Uh, you'll find that information on antennas, uh, both old and new, and there's some pretty esoteric styles that are covered in the book. Uh, not having any experience with the previous editions uh, since they were all printed in uh, German, uh, that's my feeling of how these, how the revised uh, 13th edition is. You know, from a research standpoint, uh, this extreme um, of depth is, is great as you can look up an antenna. 
uh, search the citations and reference material, and kind of move on from there. Which may be the biggest comparison between these two books. Road Hummels is a starting point, a guide to get you going on a project or an antenna design, uh, point you in the right direction, while the ARR antenna uh, guide is that one-stop shop of theory, design, and practice. Now, if you're starting out on your journey to build your own antenna systems and want to know more about theory and design, uh, I definitely add the ARRL antenna book to your library. But now, if you're looking for but if you're looking for ready reference, uh, maybe a not so much the construction book, I'd go to Roadhammels. Although you can certainly build much of anything that you're going to find in the Roadhammel guide, it just takes more work um, to uh, to take those formulas and charts and sketches and put them into a, a cohesive uh, end working product. I found Road Hamels to be a valuable resource in looking something up, getting a concise overview, and then working from there. So the final word. Uh, I think both are excellent books and they are valuable in their own regard. Um, I own previous editions of the ARL Antenna Guide and was glad when they uh, came out with a uh, a new edition uh, this last year, and I'm glad that an English translation is available for the uh, Rothamel's <laughs> antenna book. Uh, I'll be using both of them in uh, future antenna projects. Well, I hope you enjoyed this inside look of the ARL antenna book and the Rothamel's antenna book. Uh, both are great additions to your amateur radio library. And questions, comments, well, leave them down below. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 7-3.